In terms of weather, it's been a disappointing year for motorcycle road racing, but if there's one thing you can almost guarantee at the Macau Grand Prix, it's dry conditions. Riders from all over the globe have been attracted to this small corner of China to pit their skills against one another. It's been going on for half a century, and some know this place better than others. The most successful rider at Macau is Michael Rutter. The eight-time winner is back with his Honda RCV, and the first job for him and his Batham's team is to bring the bike up to speed. Uh, they're in a great deal we can do, but electronics wise, we've been trying to get in there to like open it up so it doesn't, the, the traction doesn't come in as much. So hopefully that's work, but until we really get around Macau, we can't tell that. We've tried it at Brands Act, it seemed to work, but here's a completely different surface and whatever, so hopefully it'll work. And we've tried different geometry with the bike before, basically, we just rode it like it came, uh, which was good, you know, but uh, we always got to try and improve. Once again, Rutt is joined in the Batham's team by British superbike star Peter Hickman. He's had a great year on the roads. TT wins, plus breaking the lap record at the Ulster Grand Prix. He's won three of the last four Macau Grand Prix. Yeah, me and Michael get on really, really well with Michael. He's, uh, he's a real good guy. Here he is, talk of the devil. Blasted everyone's ears out with that RCV, but yeah, he's... Um... <laughs> I was waiting for it. He's a, yeah, he's a real good guy to be a teammate with. We get on really well. Um, he's got a good, dry sense of humour, which I like. David Johnson joins the PBM Ducati team for this event. He's had a good year on the roads, but is currently without a ride for next season. He's been given fellow Australian Josh Brooks' bike, which ended the BSB season in second place. Yeah, in the V4. I've never ridden a Ducati before in my life, so I uh, didn't get a chance to test it or anything, so... This first session is going to be pretty crucial. Power ca characteristics are a lot different. It revs to like 16,000 revs, so um, get it to rev all that. Make sure I'm all in that top rev range the whole time. It's um, yeah, that's going to be the hard thing to get used to. It's a similar story for his teammate John McGuinness. He's no stranger to Ducati, but this is the first time he'll have ridden Scott Redding's bike, which recently claimed the British Superbike Championship title. Yeah, this is my 21st visit. Uh, well, every year since 98, I missed 17 on my injury, so uh, yeah, just I keep looking at the mirror thinking, what, what are you doing? You know, but it's just, it's like, I don't know, it's like a, a magnet, it just draws you to it. And right at this moment now, this time, at this moment in time, just before free practice, what I'm wondering what I'm doing here, you know, but once you get on the bike, it'll be, it'll be cool. It's it's really, really special place, very, very unique, you know, and. Uh, I got an opportunity to ride that factory V4, so BSB winning bike, big shoes to fill, but uh, you know, I've never even sat on the bike yet, so it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens. There's a number of foreign riders who've been drawn to Macau once more. Horst Seiger is something of a veteran of this event and is looking for a strong finish to his season. Top five, that's always a good result because really good riders, good bikes here. So, first of all, I want to enjoy the thing. Second of all, I, I, will, I always ride as fast as I can, even if it doesn't look like. <laughs> and then we see what, what is the end. Having missed last year's race, Lee Johnson's back this time on the Ashcourt Racing BMW. He admits the competition at Macau is tough, but he's hopeful of powering his way to at least a podium finish to end what has been a good year for him. Well, no matter where we go, it's the same, the same people are at the front, you know what I mean? The, the cream races to the top, as they say, but um, yeah, it's good to, good to be back and hopefully we could maybe get on the, on the boat podium or something for a bit, of a bit of a show. Ian Hutchinson also returns from Macau, having recently undergone more surgery on his leg. He hopes this is another step back to full fitness. I um, had another off in um, August just to remove a plate, so it's made me feel a lot better, but it's been another tough couple of years um, going back from the last injury and with bikes and stuff, so um, I know the process that's needed to get back to the front, and uh, I believe I'll get there, so we've got to start somewhere, and Macau is the place again. Macau's the final stop in the inaugural Metzler King of the Road series.
Beginning at the Cookstown 100 in April, the competition has involved a number of televised race meetings across the British Isles, including a number of prominent events in Northern Ireland and the Isle of Man, as well as the Scarborough Gold Cup in England. The year ends here in the Far East, and with no Dean Harrison at Macau, this year the Metzler King of the Roads has already been decided. Derek Shields is the inaugural champion. Only Harrison could have taken the title had he been here, although both Michael Sweeney and Peter Hickman are at Macau. Delighted with the way the season went, you know, um, Burroughs, RK Engineering Racing, you know, we had a decent run, we got a few wins, you know, um, had a couple of challenging races as well, but that's that, that, that's all part of the enjoyment of it, you know, we put on a bit of a show and yeah, happy out. Guy Martin once said there are only two walls to worry about at Macau, the one on the left and the one on the right. This is a street circuit like no other in terms of motorcycle racing. No hedges or fences, it's Armco all the way around on both sides of the track. The only part of runoff is at the famous Lisboa turn, so there really is no margin for error. Making a mistake at Macau really isn't an option. The circuit is effectively in two parts, from Fisherman's Bend down to Lisboa is long, fast straights, and then the rest of the track twists and turns as it rises and drops back down again with few overtaking opportunities. However, the race still manages to provide many thrills and hopefully not too many spills. Coming up next, the riders take to the track. The sun is shining as the countdown to the Macau Grand Prix continues. Peter Hickman put his marker down by posting the quickest time in the first of two qualifying sessions. Now, with everybody else pulling off in front of him, he's going to go purple in the final sector to make this a really serious uh, opening lap of the second part of the qualifying session. No purple for Peter Hickman in the final sector, unfortunately, but purple for the time. And he goes down into another bracket, 225.1. Hickman's was the time to beat as the second and final session got underway. And there it remained until Michael Rutter tried to better it on the final lap all good to go we've got less than a minute on the clock there are no more chances for michael rutter he's improved but he hasn't gone purple Truly four and then 44 for sector one and sector two he really needs purples to get in front of Davo johnson i think so this may well not do michael rutter what for, for michael rutter what he wanted it to do but He's still got this intricate third sector. Almost coming to an end now. As he rounds Donna Maria. He'll see Melko Hairpin ahead on the brake, standing it up to turn down the hill. And as he goes down Black Sands Hill, he'll cross the timing marker and we will know if he's got purple or green. And he really wants purple if it's green. So what is this going to be? He needs to be better than 226.0. Is this lap going to achieve that for him? 26.3 is what he had. So if he's improved on that, he could be close enough. Checkered flag is waving. The session is at an end. Peter Hickman is on pole position. Oh, but only just Michael Rutter, astonishingly. 225-382. Michael Rutter gets into the 25s and he comes within a couple of tenths of Peter Hickman. Although Peter Hickman was in the pits and watching that, that lap of Michael Rutter's was faster than it looked.
Michael Rutter narrowly misses out on pole position. Peter Hickman narrowly gets it. The front row conference will be Michael Rutter, Davo Johnson, Peter Hickman uh, and John McGuinness. For a man in pole position, you haven't got the biggest smile, really. Normally, <laughs> the, you've got the biggest smile, but... No, no, I'm all right, to be quite honest. Um, just thinking, trying to, trying to think. Uh, we used one tyre through the whole session. We didn't chuck any cues in or anything like that, so it was just the one race tyre. That's what I've been... I'm trying to think what I want to, uh, you know, make the race as fast and as long as possible for me. So, um, I know, I'm, I'm quite happy, to be honest. I mean, I did a 26-0 or something on lap 12, which is the last lap of the race it will be. Um, you know, most of the riders aren't that much faster than that with Q tyres, so um, we should... You know, we're in a good place. That was some lap, and John McGuinness almost got in the way. Yeah, you know, uh, it's hard around here, you know. Um, a few people in qualifying, they don't realise you're coming up behind them, and... I had my first tyre, I was on a real good time and yeah, I just um, got caught out with something on them. John on the last lap uh, and then before that I had to wait for a big gap so I had to virtually stop going on to the start and finish. I lost a couple of tenths there but to be second, I'm more than happy though. You know, and Peter's first, it's brilliant for uh, Bathams and MGM so uh, we can be all smiling. Hopefully he'll share the money with me. John, happy with your lot? Yeah, I got nabbed off the front row, didn't I, the 12th hour but you know, I shouldn't be disappointed. Uh, you know, I've not done much riding this year. Uh, these boys have been riding week in, week out, so I think, you know, where we were, where we ended up is, you know, they might uh, take notice again that I can still do it, you know. It's uh, had a good, real, real good consistent pace on my race tyre on. There was a lot of qualifiers getting flicked in there at the end, and uh, I missed my window on my quality at the end. I was a bit late putting it in, but fight's good, team's good. They're all jelly, we're all happy, you know. I was Birdie's first ever ride in 1996, so we've always had that relationship. My 21st Macau, you know, we're, we're in the mix, you know, and, and what will be will be tomorrow. And uh, I can uh, go to bed proud that we're, that we're, you know, we're running at the shop. And you might have tested your friendship with Michael Rutter on that last lap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why did I hold him up or something? Eh? Almost. Uh, yeah, out of fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know he was coming, and I, I was, I was trying to find some space myself because I had a qualifier on, so. It's uh, it's it's difficult. It's a difficult situation to uh, <laughs> tough. Uh, you have all the luck here. Anyway, did I get in your way? No, I, I didn't. I would never do that to anybody around here. No, it's, it's it's a long way around. It's a long lap, and you know it's frustrating when you get balked right right at the last bit. But I was looking for space for for, for one go of my queue, and it, and it didn't happen for me. The, the, I missed it by a few seconds, so. A little bit disappointed, but on the same hand, I'm riding as probably as good as I've ever done, so uh, it's a positive. The stage is set for the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. Peter Hickman takes up pole position. He's won this race, having started from the third row of the grid and has won three of the last four races here. His teammate, Michael Rutter, is the most successful racer on two wheels at Macau. David Johnson will fancy his chances, having become used to Josh Brooks' British superbike. Likewise, John McGuinness on the title-winning Scott Redding Ducati. This could be a race decided by tyres, and preservation of rubber could be key. However, the last two years this race has failed to go the distance, so that scenario is a possibility. However, the riders will compete, expecting to go the distance. Let's now hand over to race commentator Richard Nichols. He hasn't been uh, on top of the timesheets all day long, though, uh, but he's always been there when it mattered. So quickest in free practice, quickest in qualifying one, quickest in qualifying two, and quickest this morning by a second and a half in the warm-up. And that is the daunting gap that everybody else is dealing with. They know that Peter Hickman can do that when he needs to, or perhaps just when he chooses to, but either way, he can do it. green flag showing that the grid is properly formed and they are now under starters orders and we wait for all the lights to send them on their way and they are off 53rd Macau motorcycle Grand Prix is underway Peter Hickman leads the charge down to turn one it's Peter Hickman into turn one already with a little bit of a gap Hickman's got his head down and he's going really hard he's got Michael Rutter behind him Lee Johnston's made a storming start and is in third place 
Damo Johnson behind him in fourth as they go through Mandarin, close to the arm pub, and on down towards this bar. A lot of late breaking has been tested here. A lot of people have been up the escape road, so they should know where the breaking markers are. Hitman, Rutter, Johnson, lift past Lee Johnson, uh, going round the right-hander under the bridge, turn right and up San Francisco Hill. Settled down in race order now. Saiga, Costamo, Gary Johnson, Phil Crow, Ian Hutchinson and Didier Grams are the brightest behind that top five. But it is Hickman with Rutter, his only challenger at the moment. What can Davo Johnson do? Can he bring that Panigale to bear on Rutter and then Hickman? Michael Rutter's already struggling to be with Peter Hickman. Halfway round the opening lap, Hickman has a margin. He is two tenths of a second quicker in sector two than was Michael Rutter, and the same in sector one. So that's what it is on the clock. This is what it is to Peter Hickman, though. No empty road ahead. Nobody to trouble you. Through uh, police up Boris Hill, left into Donna Maria, almost at the end of the opening lap. Weight on the throttle, and then the hairpin is up ahead. Hickman, Rutter, Johnson, Lee Johnson. Round they go, and down the hill, Peter Hickman. He's just, this is what everybody in the paddock expected would happen and was afraid would happen, is that Peter Hickman just clear off and he's already doing that. One lap out of the 12 down and Hickman is out on his own. Oh, and we have a, a faller already. We're going to get a flag for this because those things are just too heavy to pick up on. Andre Perez doing his best to get it off the ground. Uh, and the Martians will be over the fence there if there's an opening. But that might well bring out a yellow flag. Still got green showing on the timing screen. Peter Hickman still disappearing. He was 1.8 seconds ahead of Michael Rutter going over the start line. And you can see that is the gap still behind that. Dave Johnson, Lee Johnston, Horse Seiger, Davey Todd, Gary Johnson, and Peter Hickman, just all over this race. Are we going to see a replay of uh, Andre Perez? Yeah, oh no, that wasn't his fault really, was it? Got tagged from behind. It is a very tricky little corner, that Melko hairpin. There's a step there as much as anything else. It's not just a corner, it's a shelf. Uh, and it's so easy uh, to get it wrong. But when you do get it wrong is that, what you just saw. There's almost no coming back from uh, an error there or an incident there. It's slow, so it's nice and gentle, but it's a very tricky corner. Peter Hickman not having a tricky time anywhere. Uh, once again, purple on sector one and sector two of this lap. He was 1.8 seconds clear of Michael Rutter, but already Peter Hickman absolutely beating that uh, rear tyre. Absolute confidence in the bike and the tyre at the moment, but is it going to last the distance? Is he going to use it all up? He's trying to put himself out of reach so that Michael Rutter and Davo Johnson have no hope of getting anywhere near him. Uh, and at the moment, that is working. He's got Johnson and Lee Johnson right behind him, so that's all looking very good. But the gap is growing. Another purple sector for Peter Hickman. He's quicker than anybody on this lap again. You can see by the way he was riding that he wasn't taking prisoners this afternoon. And uh, if he can get the kind of lead that he appears to be building at the moment without destroying that rear tire, they won't be able to catch him before the end of the race. And he'll be out of cruise home waving. So, 2.24 on that lap. So, we're getting dangerously near the lap record. And the gap is 4.4 seconds to Michael Rutter. 4.4 seconds in two laps. 
Peter Hickman is on fire once again, and no one has an answer. Nobody, not Michael Rutter, not Dave Johnson, and not Lee Johnston. They are the closest thing to a challenge at the moment. That little trio there of the people chasing uh, Peter Hickman, and behind Lee Johnston, you see horse side uh, David Todd and uh, Gary Johnson. in the hills here, but, uh, there are a couple of places and uh, Davey Todd's the man to find them. Johnson and Johnston. These three are in a race, there's no doubt about it. The gap between them last time was very small. And you can see there still are where there's a sort of second between like 1.5 or 6 seconds, you and the next man then you're in a race, but when it's 4.4 seconds you're not. So Peter Hickman's only racing himself, no purpose this time. Has he done all he wanted to do? Or has he just decided that he'll wait and see what happens now? He's got a 5 second, might be 6 seconds in there. Just stay in front of the uh, little trio of people chasing you. Rutter, Johnson and Johnston. Away now on the uh, start, finish straight before they even get here. And what is the gap this time? 7.2 seconds. He's done it again on that lap. So Peter Hickman just piling it on. He's 7 seconds clear. Davo Johnson is right up on Michael Rutter's tail now. That was, uh, gap was a second going over the line, but the speed of that Ducati on the straight has brought him right up into contention. Lee Johnson is with him. Davy Todd, as we saw, has got past for Sonia and is working his way up towards this little group of people. Gary Johnson, Ian Hutchinson in eighth place. That is a result for Ian Hutchinson. And ninth for uh, no, Costa Armo. That's a result for him. Derek Shields in eighth and tenth. We're pleased with that. John Burrows and the Suzuki team will be over the moon with that. It's a 12 lap race. Yes, he is. Johnson and Nicky Cassidy are there. Right behind him. Really right behind him. Really close enough to have a go. He's down to Cassidy, but he's quick. But uh, I think Butter was quickest in the speed trap on the Honda. Uh, most of the sessions, if not all of them. So the bike's quick. But then the Ducatis are too. And Davo Johnson is now right behind Michael Rutter. Hadn't seen that bike until Thursday morning. Hadn't ridden any kind of Ducati at all until Thursday morning. And he said, as he gets to know it, it's sort of coming towards him and he's getting faster on the bike. First off, it was much quicker than he is. But now he's much quicker than he was on Thursday. Horse Saga was still right behind. Davy Tusk might, uh, might be pressuring for him a pass now, but... Speaking, oh, now, now we are going to have a yellow flag, if not a red one, because we've got bikes on track. That's impossible to get through there, isn't it? The track is blocked. We are definitely going to have to red flag this one. We've had three, four sessions of motorcycles without any bother at all. That is not exactly the way to do it. Matt Chapenny didn't really have anywhere to go. Here is the 
grid as it is now, I hope. Yes, it is. So, Hickman, Russell Johnson, Lee Johnston, David Todd, as we saw, and uh, Horst Steiger, Gary Johnson, Ian Hutchinson, 38, and uh, Cosimo, Derek Shields, Michael Sweeney, and Phil Crow. Now, will they have an answer prepared? Will the rest of the front row be ready for the quick getaway? What's happened to Peter Hickman's tyre in the meantime? Lots of questions to be answered. And the green flag at the back. Once again, we've got a grid formed up and ready to go. And for the second time of asking, the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix is underway. Hickman this time doesn't get the drop on everybody else. And it's Rutter who leads into turn one. So Michael Rutter had a plan of his own. And it's Michael Rutter who heads the field through turn one with Hickman looking over his shoulder. Davey Todd is right up into third place. David Johnson is in fourth. Lee Johnson is behind him. Ooh, that was crafty from Michael Rutter. But Hickman is trying to late break him into this bar. Rutter gets his foot down, got the line, takes track position. Rutter. Michael Rutter leads Peter Hickman round the turn and up into the far away hills. Now, Michael Rutter is going to be a very hard man to pass up here. This top little group isn't going to do a lot of chopping and changing. There aren't too many places here for two bikes to go side by side. So, Davy Todd, brilliant getaway. The Michael Rutter was absolutely ready for Peter Hickman. And now, all he's going to do is keep him behind him for the next eight laps. Well, seven and a half. So, it should be easy, right? Stylist Michael Rutter, always a pleasure to get my board view of Michael Rutter at work. And always nice to hear that on the back of the line. Rutter, Hickman, Johnson, you've got to the top. down Black Hill, uh, they're prepared for the blast that goes all the way to Lisboa. A couple of little corners in the way to interfere with things, but basically this is full throttle territory and there's a lot of it. Uh, and it's a good place for uh, a good bike to use its power and get past. Michael Rutter not as far in front of Peter Hickman now as Hickman was in front of Rutter at the end of the first lap of the first start. So you can see that Michael Rutter hasn't been able to get the drop on Hickman uh, in lap one as Hickman was but now we'll find out if he's got the power to keep Peter Hickman behind him in the slipstream Rutter Hickman Davey Johnson, Davey Todd Lee Johnston and it's still Michael Rutter this is what we were talking about the afternoon sun now is dropping down lower it's right in their eyes this could well be an issue uh, Peter Hickman on the inside is he going to do it this time it looks like he's got this one done he's got Michael Rutter nicely tucked up and that's Hickman through Rutter second David Johnson is third David Todd is that David Todd or Lee Johnston behind it's swapping places it's David Todd Davy Todd staying with him, but Hickman's where he wanted to be again, back out in front. Has Michael Rutter played his ace and lost? Has he played the only trump card he had, which was that flying stop? And has Peter Hickman done it again? And is this going to be now uh, a rerun? The first three laps of this race with Hickman clearing off and everybody else trying to catch Michael Rutter. Look at Hickman. You can see already he's further in front of Michael Rutter than Rutter was at the end of the opening lap. So the gap between them was 0.2 of a second. Rutter in front of Hickman. Oh no, 
and it's happened again. That's another red flag. This is where the, oh, this is where the uh, touring cars and the Formula 3 cars have all of their mishaps. And I can promise you that we will not be restarting this race this evening. The red flag is out. Riders on their way back into pit lane. And at this point in time, the only thing that we can be absolutely certain of is that there'll be no more racing here this evening. making their way back to the Macau Grand Prix paddock with the race having just been red flagged for a second time. It seems those riders involved in the crash have escaped serious injury, but there will be no more racing as officials have just announced the race has been cancelled and no result has been declared. Therefore, the race will not be run tomorrow. Michael, no one knows Macau better than you. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever known anything like this? No, um, we've just been told basically, I think that's uh, the scrap tip. A uh, bit of a shame for Pete because, you know, he deserved it and uh, Bathams and MGM, all the money everyone's put in and all the other teams, you know, um, even if it just uh, did that, uh, that first part of the race, you know, Pete was away with it, you know, I'll be happy to get second as well and, uh, you know, it, it was a bit of a result, but um, I can't stand why they've done that. Now, first of all, a reaction to what's been going on? Yeah, <laughs> well, first thing is obviously we hope everyone's all right. We've, I've seen a couple of the guys have literally just come back in now while we're just before we started speaking, but um, I don't know how they all are. I really hope they are okay. Uh, apart from that, obviously, big shame that it's, um, you know, we got red flagged twice. <laughs> um, I'm guessing you would have come back tomorrow, would you? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see how they can just call it a non event. You know, we've just traveled halfway around the world for. For nothing now you know there's been a lot of money spent a lot of sponsors have put a lot of money in and there's a lot of investment here to then just call it and say right we're not going to race i think is uh, it's pretty shocking really you know there's um there's a lot of people that yeah have lost a lot of money for no reason and it's um it's a big shame it's a big shame john we just heard uh, that's it yeah uh, well it's news to me it was it for me anyway wasn't it i was uh, i was back in the garage when all the chaos was going on so yeah uh, yeah, disappointing. Long, long way to come. <laughs> long way half around the world to for a, for a DNF and, and for a, an all result. But at, at this moment in time, you just gotta hope the boys that are upside down are all right. You know. Let's talk about the positives then. That first race, the, the first four laps. Yeah. You could stay with Peter, and then you had Dave O'Johnson coming in as well. Yeah, I, I, I Pete went. He had a brilliant start. Uh, I tried to get on with him a bit. His lines were so fast, like the Honda's a bit slow on turning over the top and. Uh, Basically, I, he just cleared off, and I thought, right, I'm going to be on my own here a bit. And I see my pit board, I think it's plus one, and I thought, oh. and they're not far behind. And I just thought, I've just got to just keep the tyre and just it's a long race, and uh, just keeping keeping that second position. And and then obviously, just uh, the, the red flag came out, and that was the end of that. So um, yeah, bit of a shame, really shame for the team and that. So better start on the restart though for you. Yeah, he won't do me again on the start. I'm normally good at starts. So I was well disappointed and uh, got a good start and I thought right I'll just try and hold him off as long as I can. Trouble is the lights going down and uh, when you're doing like 180 mile now at the end of the straight there and uh, you can't see any of the braking mark it's just like sun and uh, I braked miles too early I thought but I just wasn't sure so yeah uh, he come flying past and obviously the red flag came out again but uh, yeah it's just a bit of a shame for all this practice we've done and everyone's put a great effort all the bikes look good and uh, yeah, another, you know, one of those things. So that first four laps was so, so sweet for you. Yeah, you know, I, I've said all weekend, I've been really, really comfortable. I'm, I'm riding well within myself. The bike's working absolutely awesome. The team's working awesome. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, but, you know, I feel like I'm in a really uh, comfortable place that I can just do my own thing and I seem to be a lot faster than everyone else. So when things work that nice, it's, it's really nice, you know, but... Um, Again, that just makes the, this whole ending even worse. <laughs> you had a little bit of work to do on the restart. Uh, a little bit. Michael had a slightly better start than me in the second one. It was close. It was only a, kind of a metre in it, but um, I was quite happy to follow him and listen to the RCV for a lap, really, to be quite honest. Uh, and then I thought, right, again, we didn't know what, how the race was going to pan out, so I just thought I'd 
sneak through at Lisboa on lap two and then obviously got red flagged again. So Was that your plan? Was that what you were thinking as you were coming round? I'll, I'll have a go at Lisboa if the opportunity arises? Yeah, if the opportunity arises, it's, you never really know. I mean, Michael's pretty much the king of last of the late breakers, so he's quite hard to outbreak normally. Uh, but the sun was really, really low and I know we were all kind of struggling to see our braking markers. So um, I think I managed to kind of take him by surprise a little bit there when he braked probably a little bit earlier than he wanted to. But uh, all good. That was some Macau, wasn't it? Oh, man. It's... Um yeah, I was really up for that, like especially that first uh, start. Like I was starting to get in a rhythm, and and I could see well, me and Michael were gonna have a good dig dong. And, Michael was uh, looking worried. Was he? I think so. Yeah, he, he was looking worried. I think. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I felt really, really good. Um, and um, yeah, every time I rode the bike, it felt better and better, and I was getting better, learning more about the bike. And um, yeah, then obviously the the red flag and. Safety is paramount, obviously, and, and we're all mates here, so I want to make sure everyone's okay. And then the restart, and it happened again. So, yeah, I wish we could go again because I felt so good, and I just knew that I was going to be on the podium. Like, it was no doubt in my mind, so it was, um, yeah, a bit disappointing, a bit of a um, bad ending to it. Those first fallouts, was everything just coming towards you then, was it, or did you just have it not as good a start as you'd hoped for? Oh, I got a real bad start, yeah. I've um, got to learn how to get this thing off the line. I hope they'll ride it again. Bertie's pretty happy, so, yeah. Uh, Maybe I will be riding again, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just got a yeah, crappy start. And then a couple of boys passed me, so I had to dive bomb Lee in the, in the Lisbon in the first uh, the first bit. And then just caught, and then I already lost a bit to Michael, and then I caught him, and then I started getting comfortable. So, yeah, but it wasn't to be, unfortunately. That's how it is sometimes. But Davy Todd went past you on the restart, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, another crappy start. So, um, <laughs> And that was actually better than the first start, so it was, um, yeah, but I knew what I could do. That I was comfortable with the bike, so I just passed him, and, and then I, I could hear the guys behind, so it was, um, my, my plan was just to sort of sit there, do the same thing, and um, go away and sort of gap the, the rest of the field, and then uh, have a pop at the end on Michael. That was my plan, but obviously... Um, to, for that to happen, it would have had to be a full race, and it wasn't to be, unfortunately. And what was the problem with your bike? If I knew that, I'd tell you. We, the, I think it's a, a, a modern-day fault with these modern, complicated bikes. You know, the, the, the boys are scratching their head. We don't know what's wrong with it. It's, it's, it's a, like a fueling problem. When you accelerate, it it stops, you know. So there's like a, it feels like we're on an old two-stroke and it was vacuuming, you know, though it's not getting any fuel. Uh, so, yeah, we tried some things on the, after the sighting, like the warm lap is the same, so I had no choice but to stop, but, yeah, disappointing. Because if there was one race that you really wanted to race this year, it's been this one, I would imagine, because of the bike that was between your legs. You know, I, I, I sort of tried everything, you know, I've been to hell and back with my leg. I feel like I haven't done anything wrong all year, but not, just not got going at all, you know, the, the TT Northwest wasn't wasn't great for us, but... This bike was awesome, you know, it's BSB Championship winning bike, Scott Redding's bike, I've got on it, I felt comfortable on it, I felt fast on it, I felt smooth, you know. Yeah, every apex, you know, I, I was getting stronger and stronger through the weekend and then we didn't get the, the icing on the cake, but at least, uh, <laughs> got Birdie in my ear just in the background there, you heard it, it's like it's talking TT. But, uh, I don't know, it, it's just great set of lads, I felt super confident on it. Wherever we're going to be in the race, I don't know, but we're going to be knocking on the door of a podium, and you know we could be sleeping on it for the for the rest of the you know, winter. Uh, still believing I can do it, you know. Okay, so a winter break for you now, is it? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, finally, <laughs> I don't normally have a break. To be fair, I've got a few things going on, but not going um, to New Zealand or anything this year. Uh, not New Zealand this year, no. Um, I was looking at maybe doing the Sepang Eight Hour, but it doesn't look like that's happening now. So i got a few things to go and see. I'm going to go and see Akropovic in Slovenia and go and see the Olin's gang and also BMW as well in Germany, so I'll still be travelling. And everything together for Smiths next year, is it? Yeah, staying the same, uh, same for next year. Smiths Racing Team for, for the whole year and then, um, yeah, all good. Has this been your best year of road racing? Yeah, it has, yeah. And it's, um, well, at the moment I'm unemployed for next year, so that's... Um, that's my next question. Yeah, so I'm... I've just been told to, to sit out and, and sit, like hang on and wait, like don't jump on the first thing that comes, but it um, doesn't look like I'll go the Honda route again for whatever reason. It was not up to me. But, um, yeah, had a good good result with them, good take, good uh, year with them, and then the Classic TT went really well as well. So, yeah, it was definitely my best year of road racing for sure. So And everything I rode were at the front, so 
and um, yeah, so I just I guess showing what you can do on Josh Brooks' bike that's a good thing, yeah, yeah. I never sat on the bike before um, Thursday, so um, yeah, it all happened pretty quick, but it seemed to suit me it, like just perfect for me. My like, um, it's quite a small bike, and I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot. Um, but yeah, you need the, you need a bit of strength to hang on to the thing because it's so fast, and uh, it definitely suited me. And yeah. Um, next time you race, will you be a married man, or do you hope to race before then? I'll probably race before. I've got the um, the Island Classic at Phillip Island. Uh, I haven't got a ride for that either yet. <laughs> so it's not looking good at the moment. I've had all these good results, and then no no bikes to ride after this. But um, yeah, uh, and then I get married in February. So looking forward to that. I'm guessing this is not the end of the Michael Rutter Macau story, though. <laughs> I don't know. Depends what they do. Um, you know, I'm really concerned why they don't run a few laps tomorrow or something. It'd be, uh, you know, they could do another six-lap race or something tomorrow. I just, uh, I think they just thought we'd just get out of the way. Finally, just because this year coming into Macau, you've not done as much racing as you have done in the past. Is, if you do come back next year, is that something that you're going to have to look at? Well, I'm, I'm going to do the same as I did last year. Really, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do the one or two meetings. You know, we, well, I'm 47 years old, I'll be 48 next year. You know, I'm, I'm trying, uh, I'm getting a bit slower every time and, you know, it's normal really, but, uh, you know, like Peter, you see how quick he is and I think, God, I used to be like that years ago, but, <laughs> but uh, it's, 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 it's unfortunate, but we just do get older and we're slowing up and it's like my eyesight then really, my sight's okay, but I think with the light change, you know, it's, it's quite difficult and uh, those kind of things what catch you out more than anything. And, you're not, you're not, uh, you've got to be to the millimetre and uh, we, we're not quite doing that, but I still enjoy it and, you know, I think we could have gone the podium, you know, I, I might have been third, you know, but um, I think we could have done it still, I had a bit in hand, so, uh, you know, at the moment I'll come back next year if I'm enjoying myself, you know, like a few people said, you know, basically what you're going to do when you're going to retire, I said, I'll wake up one morning and get up and think, right, that's it, I've had enough, but I mean, I'm not going to put a date on it. My final question was, and Birdie just hinted <laughs> at it, what, what about 2020? What are your thoughts at this moment in time? Uh, do, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place at the minute. You know, I have to be totally honest with my hand on my heart. I'm still, you know, I still work for Stuart Garner with Norton. So, uh, you know, we, we've got to just knock our heads together, really, and make a plan and see, see where we want to be, see if Stuart wants to go racing again or... Or what, it, or what he wants to do, but uh, I don't know. Uh, definitely open to go for negotiations. I mean, my first ever TT win was with, was was with well, my first ever TT race was with Paul in 1996. My first ever win was with Paul in 1999. So, you know, I know I know the team, I know the guys, and you know, I'd love to do something with them in in the future. But uh, you know, we're a long way from it. We're sat in the sun, well, red hot weather in, in China. Disastrous race for everybody, you know, it's, it makes us, doesn't make us look good at all whatsoever there. I mean, I know it's nobody's fault, but, uh, you know, just let's get back home and, you know, right, right in there in that sweet spot of the sharp end just makes me realise how, how much I love racing bikes and how, how much I, I want to still do it. You know, I look at myself in the mirror and my eyes are baggy and I'm 47 and I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing, you know, and I just, that getting the leathers on and getting on the bikes the special bit and uh, you know long may continue I think whatever happens you will be on a bike next year <laughs> uh, put me under pressure now Dave yes yes I will, I will well, we, hope, we hope that's the case having declared the result null and void because three laps of the rerun were not completed officials reversed their decision with victory awarded to Rutter at the end of the one completed lap Peter Hickman is second, with David Johnson third. With the circuit having reopened to traffic, there was no time for a podium ceremony. In terms of the Mets, the king of the roads, Derek Shields has already been confirmed champion, the only change being Peter Hickman leapfrogs Michael Sweeney for third place. That wraps up the Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. Michael Rutter takes an unprecedented ninth victory and surely will be back to try and make it 10 next year.